dear students zeros of analytic functions we have a problem related to the uh, nth derivative of an analytic function find integral over gamma e raised to i z dz by z square where gamma of t equal to e raised to i t zero less than or equal to t less than or equal to 2 pi we have the equation fn of a equal to integral n factorial by 2 pi i integral over gamma f of w dw divided by w minus a already is 10 plus 1 so to find this integral we can apply integral over gamma f of w dw divided by w minus a already is 10 plus 1 equal to 2 pi i by n factorial into fn of a here we have given integral over gamma e raised to i z d z by z square. So comparing this equation we get f of w or f of z we can write any variable f of z equal to e raised to i z and a equal to here z square means z minus 0 whole square a equal to 0 and uh, n plus 1 equal to n plus 1 equal to 2 therefore n equal to 1 and gamma equal to e raised to i t the unit circle 0 less than or equal to theta t less than or equal to 2 pi so therefore integral over gamma f of z sorry e raised to i z t z divided by z square equal to f dash of 0 into 2 pi i by 1 factorial that is f dash of 0 f of z equal to e raised to i z that implies f dash of z equal to i e raised to i z so i into e raised to i into 0 into 2 pi i that is equal to 2 pi i square that is minus 2 pi similarly we have another question in the lower gamma sin z by z cube dz where gamma of t equal to same e raised to i t 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 2 pi here also we can compare with the equation we get f of z equal to sin z and n plus 1 equal to 3 that implies n equal to 2 and a equal to here also 0 and by equation in the lower gamma sin z by z cube dz equal to 2 pi i by 2 factorial into f double dash of 0 a means 0 that is 2 pi i by 2 factorial means pi i f of z equal to sin z f dash first derivative is cos z and second derivative is minus sin z so this is minus sin 0 that's equal to 0 so these are the questions some questions related to the Cauchy's integral formula and its corollary now we have the next section section 3 zeros of an analytic function we have a function analytic function f from g to c where g is an open set and f is analytic and we take an arbitrary point a belongs to g and a is said to be a zero or root of f if f of a equal to zero that is if f of a equal to zero then a is called a zero or root of the analytic function f of z and a is called a zero of order or multiplicity m multiplicity m which is a number greater than or equal to one that is an integer greater than or equal to one a is called a zero of order or multiplicity m greater than or equal to one if there exists an analytic function g from capital g to c such that f of z equal to z minus a all raised to m into g of z where g of a not equal to zero so a is called a zero of multiplicity m greater than or equal to one if there exists a 
analytic function g which is satisfy f of z equal to z minus a all raised to m into g of z where g of a not equal to 0. Next we have a definition entire function entire function or otherwise it is known as integral function integral function we already told about already staged the definition of entire function that is an entire function is a function which is defined and analytic everywhere in the complex plane that is a function which is analytic every point in the complex plane C finite complex plane C then it is called an entire function we have example sin z cos z e raised to z polynomials etc now we have a proposition related to the entire function that is the statement is if f is an entire function then f has a power series expansion f of z equal to sigma n equal to 0 to infinity and z raised to n with the infinite radius of convergence that is we already told about the power series expansion of an uh, analytic function in some open disk in earlier theorems here the theorem this proposition is about the power series expansion of some entire function in a plane with infinite radius of convergence that is we have given that f is entire f is an entire function that means f is analytic throughout c every point in c therefore the radius of convergence that is f is analytic in every in the entire complex plane that means if we take any disk any disk in the complex plane with any arbitrary center a with a radius any number even if even we can take the radius as infinity that is we take a disk with the center a and the radius as infinite radius so f is since f is an end therefore f is analytic in this disk also therefore for a disk we have the power series expansion as f of z equal to sigma n equal to 0 to infinity a n z minus a all raised to n this is true for any a you take a equal to 0 then f of z equal to sigma n equal to 0 to infinity a n z raised to n and that is the proof of the this proposition next we have a very very important theorem that is the leo willis theorem that we you already studied in your sixth semester complex analysis paper very important theorem leo willis theorem leo willis theorem statement if f is a bounded entire function then f is constant it is a single line statement the theorem is a single line theorem but it is a very very important uh, theorem in the complex analysis it has so so many applications so the statement is very important if f is a bounded and your function then f is a constant that is if a function f of z is bounded and entire then it is a constant so we have given that there exists a function f of z which is bounded and also it is and we have to show that f of z is a constant so by definition of boundedness we can say that modulus of f of z less than or equal to m for every z in c and also it is and and we can apply the since it is and it has a power series expansion by the previous theorem and we have the Cauchy's estimate fn of a modulus of fn of a less than or equal to m n factorial by r raised to n where r is the radius of convergence of the power series corresponding to f of z this is true for every n so we take n equal to 1 so modulus of for every n and for every a it is true for every a and c so we get a as z and n as 1 so we get f dash of z 
less than or equal to m into 1 factorial by r. r raised to n means r raised to 1. So, modulus of f dash of z less than or equal to m by r. Here we have r is the radius of convergence. We know that for an entire function, the radius of convergence is infinity. So, as r tends to infinity, we get modulus of f dash of z less than or equal to m by infinity that is 0. So, the modulus never less than 0. It should be equal to 0. That implies f dash of z equal to 0. Since z is arbitrary, we get f of z is a constant. This is a very important theorem. We have the result that is sin x cos x are bounded for real numbers, for real x and for real sin x and cos x. It is bounded. That is more minus 1 less than or equal to sin x less than or equal to 1. Also minus 1 less than or equal to cos x less than or equal to 1 if x is a real number. But in the case of complex sin and cosine, they are not bounded. Because if sin z where z belongs to c is bounded, suppose that it is bounded, then what happens? We know that sin z is an entire function. Also cos z is an entire function. So it is bounded and also entire. That means by Leo Villiers theorem sin z is a constant. But we know that sin z is not a constant. We get different values for sin z for different z. So this is a contradiction therefore sin z is not bounded. We get the similar result in the case of cos z also. Cos z is also not bounded for complex numbers z belongs to c. So that is the proof of Leo theorem. Thank you.